couple of months ago, we released a video about the five Catholic holy sites in Crusader Kings 3, their backstory and meaning in Catholicism, as well as the bonuses they attribute to the rulers who control these locations, and whether these bonuses represent any historical background. The feedback for that video was fantastic, with people keen to learn more about holy sites the game uses for other religions as well. The comments on the video were generally very insightful, so let me take a moment to thank our amazing community for all the contributions on our videos. If you have further contributions, please consider joining the HIB Discord channel. Anyway, when looking into the topic, it was difficult to choose which religion we should cover in our next Holy Sites video, but then we realised something. The orthodox holy sites the game uses are actually incredibly reasonable, at least on the first glance. As one viewer has pointed out, they refer to the so-called Pentarchy, the seats of the original Pentarchies of the Christian Church, Jerusalem, Rome, Constantinople, Antioch, and Alexandria. So in this video, we want to talk about the Pentarchy, Orthodox Christianity, and its portrayal in Crusader Kings, CK3 Orthodox Holy Sites, and other important holy places for Orthodox Christianity throughout its history. If this sort of video game history channel is up your street, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, it really helps a lot. And if you are in a position to do so, we would be so grateful if you would consider supporting us on Patreon, which would allow us to put out videos more frequently and reduce our dependency on other sources of income. In Crusader Kings 3, Orthodox Christianity, or Orthodoxy, covers in the 1066 start the majority of the Balkans, Asia Minor, the islands of Cyprus and Crete, small parts of the Italian peninsula's southern end, the Levantine and Black Sea coasts, and even goes up all the way towards modern-day Belarus and Russia. This is a pretty accurate portrayal, since the Orthodox realms mainly consist of the Byzantines, their former holdings and vassals, and many of the Eastern Slavic principalities of the time. Orthodoxy in CK3 is an organised Christian faith, which is considered astray by Catholics. And just as most of the other Christian faiths, it is male-dominated, theocratic and monogamous. Especially to Catholicism, there are actually not that many differences in terms of their beliefs. They share the same sins and virtues, and have the same marriage, crime, and clergy doctrines. The only big difference is in their tenets, where instead of the Catholics' armed pilgrimages, Orthodoxy has the Pentarchy, which we will talk about in more detail later. But it seems like the two most important Christian faiths in the game actually have more in common than what separates them, which at that point in history might not have been all that wrong. Historically, the hard split between Western Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Christians goes back to the Great Schism of 1054. But this formal split between the Greek East and Latin West was admittedly preceded by a series of ecclesiastical differences and theological disputes between East and West. In the end, it was likely a mixture of political and religious reasons, as the historian and theologian Yaroslav Pelikan sums up. While the East-West Schism stems largely from political and ecclesiastical discord, this discord also reflected basic theological differences. He claims that while modern historiography usually underestimates the role of actual differences in religious practice, religious figures at the time probably over-exaggerated them for political reasons. What's more problematic than the many portrayed similarities between Catholicism and Orthodox Christianity in the game is how orthodoxy exists before the Great Schism of 1054. If you play the 867 start, you can see that already the Byzantines, as well as some of their neighbours like Bulgaria or Abkhazia, are shown as orthodox, clearly separated from the Catholic Christian West. This is an inaccurate portrayal of Christianity in 867, and while it can be argued that there already existed differences between the Constantinople-led East and the Roman-led West, this solution is a sloppy depiction of the religious map of the 9th century at best. After delving into the r Crusader Kings archives, 
We found out that in CK2, there was a similar problem. However, it was fixed by a mod that separated characters into the Latin Rite and the Greek Rite, while giving them all the same religion, more accurately labelling the differences that existed in the still officially united church before the Great Schism. If you are still a CK2 purist, do check out this mod, link in description. As we already mentioned in the introduction, the big thing that sets Orthodox Christianity apart in Crusader Kings is one of its tenets, the Pentarchy. The description you get when you hover over this tenet sums up the history behind it quite well. Our holy sites are more than just sacred places, they are the very seats of power from which our religious leaders rule. Historically, the Pentarchy is the ancient model of church organisation, formulated in the laws of Emperor Justinian in the 6th century. In this model, the Christian church is governed by the patriarchs of the five major episcopal sees of the Roman Empire. Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. So we have to say, in terms of historical relevance, holy sites in the game don't really get more substantiated than the ones orthodoxy has. The same goes for the tenet in question, the Pentarchy, which gives orthodoxy plus one yearly fervour per holy site held, and means that orthodox characters gain an additional bonus upon the completion of a pilgrimage. Looking at the holy sites individually, the only one we'd maybe question is the bonus ascribed to Constantinople. The city of Constantinople was an incredibly important commercial hub and a strategic key position. So maybe it would have been more fitting to ascribe to it a bonus that benefits the religion holding it economically, or giving them a defence buff, rather than the cultural fascination progress bonus it currently has. However, the scientific progress Constantinople was historically responsible for should also not be underestimated, so its current bonus is not entirely out of character. Rome and Jerusalem give the same bonuses they give to Catholicism, which also fits with Orthodox Christianity. Antioch gives extra martial skill per level of devotion of a character, as well as extra knight effectiveness. This is probably related to how the city was reconquered from the Arabs in 969 for the Byzantine Emperor Nikephoros II by the famous Michael Bortzes and the eunuch General Peter. And Alexandria's buffs enhance a character's learning, which must have been inspired by the Great Library of Alexandria. Despite the fact that said institution was already destroyed in the 3rd century AD, this is a nice little bonus. One last nitpick we have about the Pentarchy's depiction in the game is that the patriarchs, supposedly making the religion's holy sites so special, don't actually exist. So as cool as the Pentarchy is as a concept, it really needs to be fleshed out to reach its full potential for the game in future updates. It could also be a cool gameplay mechanic if other orthodox realms could nominate their own new patriarch, as has happened throughout the history of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Nowadays, there are nine official patriarchs, representing new episcopal sees such as in Georgia, Serbia, or Bulgaria. Just because we refrain from actually suggesting changes to the five Orthodox holy sites in the game due to their undeniable relevance to the Eastern Orthodox Church, does not mean it isn't a pity some other important places for Orthodox Christianity did not feature in the game. The most obvious candidate for another Orthodox holy site would be Mount Athos on the Athos Peninsula in northeastern Greece. In game, that would be in the county of Chalkidiki within the temple holding of Ierisos. A penance. I went to live with the monks on Mount Athos for three months. Ten weeks. Ten weeks, whatever. Apparently, he lived on nothing but dry bread and goat milk. But when I picked him up, there were a lot of Nutella jars in his recycling. Mount Athos is of particular importance to the Eastern Orthodox Church, and particularly the Greek Orthodox Church. It arguably comprises the largest community of Christian monks in the world, and is home to 20 different Eastern Orthodox monasteries under the direct jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarch. Although Mount Athos is nowadays part of the European Union, like the rest of Greece, the monastic community institutions have a special jurisdiction which was reaffirmed during the admission of Greece to the EU. 
most prominently, women and most female animals are banned from Mount Athos by religious tradition of the community which lives there. According to church tradition, this is because the beautiful peninsula on the northern end of the Aegean Sea was chosen by the Virgin Mary to be her own personal garden. The mountain has been inhabited since ancient times and is known for its long Christian presence and historical monastic traditions, which date back to at least 800 AD, so before both starting dates in the Crusader Kings III. Thus had Orthodox Christianity not been blessed with the most obvious set of holy sites imaginable, this would have been a really cool holy site to include in the game. Another historically interesting Orthodox place that comes to mind is Yavari Monastery, a 6th century Georgian Orthodox monastery in what is today Eastern Georgia. Yavari is a rare case of an early medieval Jordan church that has survived to the present day almost unchanged. Unlike the more famous Gergeti Trinity Church on the foot of Mount Kazbek, which has become a symbol of Georgia's beautiful landscape and architecture, Yavari Monastery predates both starting dates of Crusader Kings, as it was already completed in the beginning of the 7th century. The monastery represents a harmonious connection with the natural landscape which became characteristic to medieval Georgian architecture. Of course, there are many other places that have significance and meaning for the different Eastern Orthodox churches. What would be your suggestions for alternative holy sites for the faith? if it weren't for the Pentarchy. Let us know in the comments. And as always, please like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button to keep updated with history in bits.